These are just my opinions but I can't even give you a disclaimer asking y'all to keep it cutesy and demure, when I didn't. Their stage presence, from worst to best is, Yunjin, Sakura, Chaiwan, Yunche and then Kazuha. It will never be justified the way people jumped on Yunjin for Starbucks. Y'all deadass assumed what she knows about Israel, assumed she doesn't care, assumed that Source Muisk is allowing her to acknowledge it or apologize, based on other completely unrelated idols' knowledge of the boycott list after so many other idols have already been publicly cancelled for it. It's not like y'all asked them about Palestine before Yunjin and Somi got mass hate for it which is when them denouncing Israel affiliations would hold more weight and not at all seem like they're trying to save face from internet vultures waiting to pick their bones clean. And y'all assumed Source Music is allowing her to speak on the matter, not because other Source Idols have, but because of how other Hybe Idols have acknowledged the conflict without taking in consideration that they have completely different management teams because they are under completely different subsidiaries that have completely different rules to abide. And then persecuted her based on your assumptions. She's chronically online. Bitch, how do you know how much media she consumes? Just because you repeat a famous meme slash trend, doesn't automatically mean you know the specifications of a genocide that's being wildly misinterpreted in the media by Zionists. It'd only be justified to conclude that she doesn't care about Palestine if she continued to get Starbucks after everything that's happened, specifically said she didn't care or denied Israel doing any harm. Duh. I'm not saying it's wrong to call people out for this, but simply calling Yenjin out, is not what happened. The same way people didn't leave Sakura's vocals to simple justified criticism. People use this as a catalyst for hate and they still do. And I'm using myself as an example. I know about what's happening I Palestine due to liberal news, I didn't know about the boycott list until idols like Somi and Yunjin were already getting cancelled for it, so it'd be unfair of me to assume anyone knows exactly what's going on when even I didn't. And when I admitted this, not knowing about the boycott that is, so I was not gonna assume other people like Yunjin knew but how I couldn't find any evidence of Starbucks supporting Israel and asking people to better educate me on the matter at the same time despite previously dedicating breaks in my own content to show people how they could contact their own government officials to support Palestine, sharing links in my bio on TikTok a number of times, explaining the situation around Gaza on my page, I was flooded with thousands of comments even from my own followers calling me a disappointment, a fake ally, Zionist, idol enabler who was just as bad as Israeli soldiers, and as bad as ever glow up who I criticized for mocking people boycotting, simply for saying I didn't know about the boycott in the first place and couldn't find anything about why it existed. That incident affected me so bad, months later, I'm still not comfortable going back on TikTok, I feel sick just thinking about posting again because of the hate comments I got, people wishing on me what's happening to Palestinians, that's one of the many instances why I took a break from making content. When I disabled the comments people would spam my other posts with the same vitriol. And I didn't even go through a fraction of what Yunjin has. I didn't even see anyone try and educate her on what's happening like they did other idols. I only saw hate. This was just used as another gotcha moment. I'm not saying that she didn't know, I'm saying that I don't think it's fair to make assumptions of other people and then act on those assumptions in this particular case especially when we all know the media isn't covering this properly. With that being said, check the links in the description box below to see what you can do for Sudan and Gaza. I genuinely admire Sakura for continuing to pursue her dreams despite thousands of people leaving millions of comments saying that she shouldn't either because she's supposedly untalented or old. Especially considering how she re at 24, turning 27 next year when most people, in and out of K-pop, seemingly give up on themselves at 25. That's inspiring. I will never understand the hype of Chewan's bob. Her hair looked better long. No Celestial really showed their potential to do well with pop rock so I don't know why they don't have more songs like that. I would rather take a hot brick to the mouth, before I let the lie, that their bad girl music, easy and 1-800 hot and fun for example, sound good, pass my lips. They're terrible. Easily the worst parts of their discography that makes me want to take back any compliment I've ever given them. It simply doesn't suit them at all. I don't care for their attempts at Latin pop sounds either. Anti-Fragile was a bad song and no one can convince me otherwise. Fire in the Belly wasn't bad however lacked the authentic spirit Latin music has. Bang PD talked about wanting to break out in that market, why not just debut a Latin member to do that? Not to stereotype but I don't think these manufactured Asian idols have the spice to bring the heat of Latin pop while being so naturally detached from the culture, like they want to break out in the Latin pop scene that means they're going to have to compete with the likes of Bad Bunny. Bad. Bunny. 
and they think fire in my belly is gonna cut it. Their raps but Yenjin specifically have to be by far this group's greatest musical sin. I want them to stop giving her what they consider raps because they sound worse than Lisa's shitty verses. Insecurities, Sour Grapes and Swan Song however are less seraphim at their best. Their softler songs are definitely the best and most underappreciated and underutilized aspect of their music, which ironically suits the group's voices the most. Chaiwan and Yunjin can definitely sing they just aren't given songs that suit their voices. Easy is a great example of this, they should have never been given that song. Why are their producers actively working against the only two vocalists in the group? Their title tracks out of every song they ever release should be the most comfortable for them to sing. It's wild to me that to this day people credit New Jeans for Y2K aesthetics spreading in K-pop and even on the internet, not only because, the same aspects they were using of Y2K has been riddled I K-pop for years, but also, musically wise G-Idol with Tomboy's use of pop rock, and Hypen with Blessed Cursed and TXT with Loser Lover used Y2K aesthetics and musical soundings before New Jeans debuted. But also because I see people credit New Jeans for doing easy to listen to music, saying everyone is doing it now because of them, I'm guessing because Noise Muisk was trending in fourth generation, but Les Seraphim debuted with Fearless Months before New Jeans with Attention, and most debut Fear Knots literally praised Les Seraphim for how easygoing the digestion of their whole debut album is. But this becomes even more of a ridiculous take, with the clarification that Source Music is the one that produced Attention, literally years ago. It was good that Le Seraphim didn't debut under Big Hit. Firstly, just based on what I've noticed, Source Music seems to pay them more fairly than Big Hit pays TXT, not that they aren't rich as fuck. Secondly, while I still want a GG from Big Hit I can definitely see how the specifications of being a woman slash girl are prioritized in the way Le Seraphim is handled. Where female idols might be handled carelessly slash insensitively at Big Hit because they're not used to managing women slash girls. Not that Source Music is perfect, they've sexualized the fuck out of Unchai. And thirdly, because of BTS and TXT Big Hit has a certain image that Les Seraphin doesn't fit. I like that Big Hit groups have initials for their names and Big Hit prioritizes artistry a lot. Yunjin is the only one of five that I'd consider an actual music artist. No matter how anyone feels about them, it can be literally proven that TXT and BTS are all rounder groups, Les Seraphim is not. There's a difference between an idol and an artist's. It's okay to be either but I like that Big Hit debuts a combination of both not just either or. Sun Jaiwo, from Are You Next, would have been an amazing addition to their lineup. She's so source muis coded. Follow her on Instagram. There's no doubt in my mind that Garam would have been the second most popular member after Sakura if she were still around. And this might be in vain, but I will wait for her to debut. If Sujin can go from being in the same position to being in Rolling Stone Korea then Garam can at least debut. The amount of delusional people who deny that Kazuha and Chaiwan got nose jobs when their noses are noticeably different than before lesser fame, is insane. The only natural beauties in K-pop are the Hunings. Get over it. I don't usually agree with the, useless member, title and I still don't agree that any of the members are useless in lesser affim even if I think their lineup would have been better without any minors. But I don't see how or why people single out Yunche for supposedly being useless when Kazuha does just as much for lesser affim as her performatively and musically speaking. I'd say their contributions were equal, so why single out Yunche? And no matter how anyone feels about her, Sakura can't be branded with the useless member title because a stan attractor will never be useless no matter what their skills are. Sakura still is the most popular member who brings in fans. She's not a better dancer than Kazuha and Unchai but she is a better performer. Being a good performer is more important than being a good dancer when your job is to be a good performer who just so happens to dance. And Sakura, out of all her members, is the most adaptable to their constant concept changes. None of these three are good singers so there's no need to compare that. The only time Kazuha's ballet skills were appropriately used in their choreo was in Black Swan. How Source Music has gone about handling a minor being in their group is really unfortunate, because Lesser Afim has a great vibe that could last them years but I'm uncomfortable with how they've sexualized Yunche. If Source Music did the exact same thing with a group that can sing well and had no kids in it, they could produce my first alt-girl group besides twice. Because there's something very girl power about Les Seraphim without being overly cliché. Their concepts are done well, even though I think they're just different variations of girl crush, they don't utilize the angel or model aspect of their concept enough at all. And I think they've been marketed rather well globally. MTV promotions with Perfect Night and Coachella gained them a lot of recognition from locals. It's a little up in the air at the moment because 2024 has been a horrendous year for them but I truly thought that could reach a stray kid's level of global success and fame someday. Source Music did that while pulling themselves out of debt, 
and are likely still paying it off. I wonder what they could achieve in a girl group, now. I'm glad that Source Music debuted literal adults like Sakura and Chaiwan, I want to see more of this. Talent doesn't have an age damn it. This whole 21 is too old bullshit is what's getting old. And obviously K-pop fans are open to the idea of older idols debuting seeing how Chaiwan and Sakura are the most popular members. The idea that these two have bad visuals or are ugly is the most forced hate Le Seraphim haters have come up with so far. How much people project their insecurities over their looks onto them is crazy. Any negative opinions about their looks isn't valid at all. And people have absolutely no right to judge Yeonjin for getting plastic surgery when she's gotten the same work their faves got. To hold her saying, she wants to change the idol industry, a very obviously scripted line for a rookie introductory video, against her for getting work done in an industry you know she likely wouldn't be in if not for those surgeries despite her obvious talent being enough, is gross and hypocritical. People always preach about plastic surgery not being a big deal or that we shouldn't judge idols for getting it knowing how harsh the industry is, until the same empathy and understanding applies to who they don't personally like. Disgusting. Sexualizing children aside, I like the idea of Source Music being a girl group based sub-label. That's cute to me. Between New Jeans, Le Seraphim, and G Friend, I can't even imagine what a boy group from them would look and sound like. And lastly, as unfortunate as 2024 has been for Le Seraphim, Fear Knots have had a much-need fandom cleanse while also getting the humbling they rightfully needed. Just. A horrible fandom. Horrid. I'll never forget how they harassed me because I said Lesser Afim doesn't stick to the concepts in their album trailers so I wasn't getting my hopes up and I got literally thousands of hate comments. You bums were really theorizing that y'all were getting witches or fairies for Unforgiven Era because of the trailer, but got Cowgirls instead, and by far their least popular title track to date. Clickbait at its finest. But more than that, no matter how much Fear Knots deny bullying Garum, y'all can't erase my fucking memory. Fear Knots, especially you toxic-ass pre-existing Eyes 1 fans, were some of the main ones bullying that child. And intentionally pushing a negative narrative, and making up instances of the other girls supposedly not liking her. If you're watching this and you're one of the people guilty for doing that. In the name of 16-year-old Garum, fuck, you musty bitch. I know a little freak in, in Hollywood. That sucks on dick, does it, does it real good. A long dick a mmm, mmm.